My name is Stephen Levin. I'm a, by training an orthopedic surgeon. I was in practice uh, for 50 years. 40 years ago, I developed a concept based on uh, Kenneth Nelson and Buckminster Fuller's work uh, on tensegrity. And the simplest way to explain it to you is the present concept of the body is based on a, a wagon wheel model where you are vaulting from spoke to spoke and then you compress them low and in each vault the, the spoke becomes a, a column, a solid column. In a bicycle wheel all the spokes are in tension and you're hanging by these tension elements and the compression elements like the hub and the rim of the wheel are floating within this tension network. So we turn the body inside out in a sense which means your bones are enmeshed in this very complex tension network and are floating there. And this way, in this model, you completely eliminate shear and moments and you only have tension and compression, which makes it much easier and much less, uh, much more efficient and much less, uh, it, it distributes the whole thing through the whole body. So at any loading at any time, covers the whole body. It's a paradigm shift in that if you're thinking of body loading, it, it requires tremendous amounts of loads and calculations to lift, the, lift anything. It would crush your spine. Calculated loads and lifting a heavy weight would crush even the, the strongest weightlifter's spine. Yeah, if you held your breath lifting a load like that using that concept, you cut off the circulation to your legs. Um, and it's, it's very energy inefficient because you're using lever forces which are uh, very high, can be very high. And it's based on the concept that you have all your bones and arms and are levers, but if you actually look at the connections between the bones, it doesn't work that way. As an example, the shoulder blade is actually floating on the chest wall. Well, if it's floating on the chest wall, there's no way of getting a lever force across because you no longer have a fulcrum. So you need, in order for a fulcrum, you need a, weight, a point on a hard point on a hard point, and you don't have that. Um, it makes it makes standing efficient because it, when you set it up in a tensegrity structure, it 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 is inherently stable, as opposed to a column structure which is inherently unstable. So you're working from stable to mobility rather than from unstable to trying to get stable. Uh, it just reverses the whole concept. If you think in a lever system, you take a dinosaur's neck, which is 10 meters long, and it, a minimum of 16 vertebrae in it, and if you had a dead chicken neck, you know how flexible that would be, and it just flap back and forth. Well, it would be the same in a dinosaur, and there's no way of stabilizing a huge structure like that in a lever system. The, the forces would be horrendous. A fly landing on the nose of the dinosaur would throw, throw him in the air. The tail of the dinosaur is even longer and more fle is flexible than that because you have a hundred bones or more in the tail of a dinosaur, and they would flap and you know, wave in the air and, and use them as a whip. So, and, the, and the muscles, of course, are alongside the bones, so there's no leverage advantage in that system. In a tensegrity system, the bones are enmeshed in this network, and by stiffening one muscle, you can stiffen the whole system, or conversely, you can, by moving one muscle, the whole system would reshape itself, and uh, so and what, even staying stable was reshaping itself. Yeah. Gim Barto's work in showing all the deep fascia and and the uh, complexity of the interaction and the uh, what he calls these little compartments in there are, are absolutely perfectly consistent with tensegrity and he's come around now so he he accepts that tensegrity is the only model that fits his observation, clinical observations. Um, because the tensegrity uh, is hierarchical in a sense it starts at the subcellular level and works all the way up to the organism level using the same mechanical system. 
um, and explains all this in connection. The fascia has gotten big because it's the, it's the tension network within the system. So as they emphasize the tension network, you're talking more about tensegrity, which also emphasizes the tension network. The bones are compression elements within that tension network. But they, they are actually part of this fascial system because they go through the, the bones and into the interstices of the bone. So it's really a continuum from cell right to the organism. Well, you have to stop thinking of, of the body system as a lever it, 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 and, a, and a still in the block, uh, a building block or one block, one stone on top of another stone. It, the body just doesn't work that way. And if you stop and think about it, you know it doesn't work that way. It certainly can't work that way in, say, quadrupeds or on four legs. Uh, it, 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 everything has to be suspended in the system. So that's if. Just because we get up on two legs doesn't mean we change the system from what the quadrupeds are. Quadrupeds do. Not only that, but the biotensegrity system is will fit the one cell organism, the insect, the fish, the worm that crawls, the you know, birds that fly. It all fits in the same mechanical system. You don't have to keep changing things. In a lever system, it's a unidirectional system that depends on gravity. So that if I hold my hand out this way and do lever calculations and turn my on this way, you have to recalculate everything because it doesn't work that way anymore. And but but in the tensegrity system at all, it doesn't make it's omnidirectional. Um, you can explain space people people up in space. Uh, moving about in a tensegrity system, and you can't in a lever system because you, they, your de a lever system is dependent on gravity in order to function. So you can't turn things upside down. It, it, when you turn it up, the whole thing loses its, its organ orientation.